Kira Knightley's elegant, fragile beauty with pale skin and high cheekbones has helped her etch out a niche as a corseted lady in period pieces. As a girl, she knew what she wanted. She was born to an active father and a playwright mother, and she asked them for an agent at the age of three. They gave her one at six. She got her first big break when she was cast as the decoy queen in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, because she looked so similar to Natalie Portman. But it's her rough and tumble tomboy ways that first got her noticed in the little independent British film turned global smash, Bend It Like Beckham. I loved it. It's sort of really girl power and that, you know, it's so great because I think um, there's a big thing in England about girls not being able to play football. And it's just a great script to say, yeah, we can all do this, you know, and it just shows everyone that I think, you know, football's a game for everyone and, you know, it's something, it's something that everyone can do and, and find fun. Part of Bend It Like Beckham's success internationally was due to the film's re-release in the States after Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl came out. Kira's gutsy performance as the no-nonsense Elizabeth Swan got great reviews. Even though before filming began, Kira was so sure she'd get fired, she only packed enough clothes to get through a week or so. But she didn't get sacked, and the workload turned out to be bigger than she'd expected. When I first read the script, I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. I'll, I'll sit in the back of carriages, I'll wear pretty dresses, I'll pout a bit, you know, it'll be fine. But actually, I've had a lot of, a lot of stunt work to do, um, which, for somebody as lazy as me, has been rather challenging. It seems Kira enjoyed the challenge, doing more of her own stunts when she took on the role of Guinevere in King Arthur. In preparation, she went to boot camp, where she learned how to ride a horse, swing a sword, fire an arrow, and throw a punch. If you're gonna do an action movie, it gets really, really boring if you don't do the action, because it means you sit around for hours and hours and hours on end. Um, I, I was lucky enough to actually have two, two or three weeks off prior to the big fight scene. I thought, well, I can either go home and chill out with friends or I can actually learn how to do all these fights. So I did, I spent three weeks and, and trained every day um, and, and got rather good, I have to say, and really, really enjoyed it as well. In 2005, Kira starred in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Her performance earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. In 2007, Kira filmed The Edge of Love, a story about the two loves of Dylan Thomas. The script was actually written by Kira's mum, Sharman MacDonald, and at no point in time did her mum ever think Kira would end up being part of it. When Kira decided that she was going to pick up the script and run with it, I have to say, she was only 17 when I started writing it, so I didn't think of her for any of the parts. When she said that she loved the script and she wanted to be part of it, I said, OK, well, it's Kathleen that you should play. And she said, no, I'm not playing that. She doesn't speak to me. I think... I think that acting is a very instinctive profession and I think that you have to be very truthful to, um, yeah, you have to stick to your instincts. And for some reason when I first read the script, I, was, I completely fell in love with Vera in, in her subtlety, in how quiet she is. I don't think she's a particularly dramatic person, but I, I felt her emotions very keenly. Kira was required to sing in the movie, something which made her quite nervous. Every single time I thought about it, before I had to do it, I, want, I really did want to vomit. And my dad said to me the week before, right, are you prepared? And my stomach just went, Vroom. oh, just don't, don't talk about it, don't mention it, just... Um, so it was fine. The first time, the first time I had to get up in front of the whole crew and seeing my knees were literally shaking. I mean, I didn't know, I... Uh, Horrible. With Pride and Prejudice, Atonement and The Duchess, Knightley's proven herself as the actress of choice for period films. What I love about doing period films is that you can take these people who have lived kind of about 300 years ago, who dressed in these ridiculous ways, who lived in these very different societies, and yet you can still completely understand them today. You know, you can still look at them and, and totally get the, the things that they're going through. So I, I think that's kind of wonderful because you get a sort of fantasy aspect where you can dive into the film and it's not what we experience on a day-to-day -day level and yet you completely understand on an emotional level what they're all going through. As comfortable in a pub with mates as she is gracing the cover of Vanity Fair magazine, Kira Knightley's rise to fame has been meteoric. She's a champion of human rights, she's got natural comic ability, and her it girl status has put her in a position of being loved by fans and desired by directors. 
Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's altogether better on screen and at mnc.tv.